rational and, and rational? I don't care about that word. Do you see the word ration in there? Yeah, I don't care about that word either. You see the word ratio? Ratio is your clue to what kind of functions these are. So in mathematics, a ratio is kind of like when we say sometimes, you know, you need, you need it in a ratio of two to three. Okay. Um, and we write it like that a lot of times with a colon, but we can also write it like this is the same, and this is a fraction. So whenever you see that word rational, rational functions, rational equations, or anything like that, it means you're dealing with stuff that's in the form of a fraction. But that's not actually the whole picture, because um, a regular number can be a fraction, but it, we wouldn't call it a rational expression or function or equation. The thing that makes it special is that not only is it a fraction, but the bottom has a variable in it somewhere, at least one. So both of these have x's in the denominator. And so this is two new parent functions that we're adding on to the stuff we talked about last semester. So last semester we had parent functions like x, x squared, x cubed, square root, cube root, and we had absolute value. So these are just two more of those. Where they're different is a few places. Um, one, it's written like a fraction, has a variable in the bottom. Two, how many pieces do each of those graphs have? Two, right? Two parts. Um, our graphs last semester all just had one continuous piece to them. This has two different ones. Uh, one reason for that is because once you get that x in the bottom, you run the risk of x being equal to zero. Now, zero is really bad in the bottom because it's undefined. Because, like, if you go back to your fractions from elementary school, they're having way too much um, Like when you start with pizzas, right? Your teacher will say, imagine you have one whole pizza, and then you're going to cut it into five pieces. Now you have one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four, right? Um, you can cut it into six pieces, right? One over six. You cut it into seven pieces, one over seven. What you can't do is cut it into no pieces. You can't cut it to one over zero pieces because you can't take something that's there and make it into nothing. And so that's a, just sort of a basic concept of why it's called undefined when you have zero in the bottom. And so this um, mathy definition right here of rational function is saying you have a function up top, function on the bottom, as long as that function on the bottom does not equal zero because it's bad. The way that is being shown on these graphs over here, by the way, these are supposed to have arrows, 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 arrows everywhere, is right here. This is the line where x equals 0 everywhere. Those two pieces of the graph, those black parts, will never actually cross that blue line. And that's your picture representation of the fact that the denominator, the x value, will never be 0. Same thing over here. Here's where x equals 0. It will never technically do that, because if you plug 0 in here, it would be 0. I feel like if I say 0 one more time, I'm going to scream. Um, do you ever feel like that when you're saying, when you have to say a word over and over? Or sometimes a word just sounds weird suddenly. You know what I'm talking about, right? Right? Okay. Um, I know you all just said, uh-huh, so I could move on. But that's OK. I appreciate you. Thank you. So then. So here, x can never be that number. That shall not be named. Y, though, look at this graph. What do you feel like this graph is telling you about the y values? The y values can never be what kind of number? Hmm? Yeah, the y. The y values for this graph will never be what? Will never be 0 or negative numbers, right? What do you think in that equation accounts for that? What what in that equation is letting you know it will always be positive? The square. The square, yeah. So that's why this graph never dips below the x-axis, why the y values are never negative. However, and I want you to write this down, there is something we can do to the parent function that will make this graph reflect down here. What is that thing? What can you do? What's what value changes that makes it reflect over the x-axis? Do you remember? Was your winter break too long? 
Remember how to make a graph reflect over? Do you want me to just tell you? The A value, right? So if this was negative 1 over x squared, instead of the, you'd still have two pieces of the graph on the same side, but it reflects down like this. And I want you to write this down on your, on your notes. So this is how it would change if A was negative. Okay, so A is negative here. And on this one, if A was negative and we had negative 1 over X instead, this left piece would flip up, would reflect over and be up here. And this right side would reflect down and be in the lower quadrant. So that's how it would look different if A was negative. And that's something you want to keep in mind later in the lesson when we're writing the equation for the graphs. All right, so next part. We are going to talk about end behavior, which is something we did last semester. So this is a reminder of what end behavior means. It's how the y values behave as the x values go out to the ends, to positive and negative infinity. And we talked about that last semester. But we also have a second thing to talk about today because the graph has two parts. We can talk about how the graph behaves as it goes out to the ends, so as it goes out. But we can also talk about how it behaves as it comes in, like to this blue line right here. What is it doing as it gets closer and closer to here? So now we have two things to talk about because there's two different parts. Um, and we're going to talk about them one at a time. This piece of information here is for end behavior going out. This piece right here is for the information when we're coming in. So one's going out to the sides, one's coming into the middle. Do you see this arrow here? There's an arrow there and an arrow there and an arrow there, and an arrow there. I need you to write something down about all those arrows. That arrow stands for the word approaches. So all of this, this whole math sentence right here, that's for end behavior. If you were to read that out loud, you would say this. Follow the bouncing, whatever this is called. Um, as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches what? That's something we're going to fill in for each problem that we do. And as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches what? Um, we're actually going to do that right here on this example. So what I would like for you to do, this is part A of this problem. I want you to write down that stuff I highlighted. You don't even think about what we're going to fill into the blank. Just Write it all down, and then I'll show you how to fill it in. So part A says use mathematical notation to determine the end behavior. That's what you're writing down. That's your mathematical notation. looking at that clock. That clock's busted, by the way. And I look at it every few minutes and remind myself that it's busted. So before I tell you how to do that, what's the parent function here? Is it 1 over x squared or is it 1 over x? It's 1 over x because they're in different directions. Um, it really has arrows here. It just didn't get printed on there. This is a shifted function. Which way has it shifted, do you feel? Which directions? To the left and, and up, right? So I want you to think about where the new origin is, the shifted origin. It's kind of like 
the X axis came up here and the Y axis shifted over here. Now, this horizontal line right here, you can write as an equation like this, y equals 2. Now, it feels like it's like x values, right, because you're going left to right. But think about what I wrote here. This is the line where y equals 2 everywhere, right? That, the x is changing, but the y is constant. So we can say, okay, y equals 2. That's that line right there. Similarly, what do you think I can write for this vertical line? It wouldn't be y equals negative 3. It would be what? x equals negative 3. So this line right here is where x equals negative 3 everywhere. So I want you to keep that in mind here. So now let's talk about this notation. So it says, so we're doing n behavior here, meaning as the graph is going out to positive and negative infinity. So as x goes out to negative infinity, I want you to sort of follow my, what I'm talking about. So out to negative infinity means I need to look at the left piece of the graph because that's going out this direction. Um, and to say x is going to negative infinity means it's going to the left. Like here's where x is negative 4. Here's the y value that corresponds to that. Good? And if I go more to the left out towards negative infinity, here's the y value that goes with that. And if I go left again, here's the y value. And what's going to happen is as I keep going out to negative infinity, the y values get closer and closer to this line. Well, so that means y is approaching what value? The y. Y is getting closer and closer to what? What's y here? 2. So the y's are approaching 2, approaching 2, approaching 2. Never actually going to get there but it's approaching it. So as x goes this way, and so another way of thinking about the y values is the graph. The actual graph itself, the black part, is what the y, is the behavior of the y's. It's getting closer and closer to 2 as x goes that way. And then same thing on the right side. As x approaches positive infinity, so just start somewhere. Here's your, here's where x is 0. x is 1, 2, 3. What y value is it approaching as x goes out this way? 2 again. Same. Okay. That's what makes this line something we call an asymptote. Because in as the end behavior is going out, positive and negative infinity, it's approaching the same number. That makes it. And ask so I just repeated myself. All right. So that's what the graph is doing as we go out. If we're not going out, what's the other direction we can go? In. And so that's this next round of notations right here, the second thing that I highlighted. Um, the C stands for some specific value. In this particular problem right here, it's the x equals negative 3. So it's coming in and it's approaching this specific value of negative 3. But this is a general form. So instead of a negative 3, it has c to just represent any number at all. It's a variable. But there's a new notation up here. It still has the arrows for approaches. But now this number here, the c, it looks like it has a negative for an exponent. This one looks like it has a positive for an exponent. But they're not actually exponents, OK? They're not powers. It's just a symbol. It's just a way of writing a certain concept. This one, this that looks like negative, means from the left. And I'll show you that in just a second. And if negative means from the left, what do you think positive means? From the right. So this plus sign means from the right. So what we're going to do now is talk about what the y values are doing as we're coming in from the left, from the right. So what I want you to do 
is set up your part B using that second highlighted sentence, except instead of C, you're going to be putting in what? The negative 3, okay, because this is a specific example. So you're going to be saying as X approaches negative 3, what does that mean to put that negative up there? What does that mean? From the left, right. So as X approaches negative 3 from the left, Y approaches what? And as X approaches negative 3 from the right, Y approaches what? So as soon as you have that written down, we'll, we'll talk about what it's asking you. Okay, so end behavior is what are the black parts of the graph, bless you, doing as you go out. This is what happens as X approaches negative 3. So how are the black parts of the graph behaving as we come in to this line X equals negative 3? So as we come from negative, as we get to negative 3 from the left, bless you, here's what that means. X is coming in from the left, coming in this way. So, let me get a different. Okay. So, for, so here's here's the Y value or the part of the graph where X is negative five, and then here's where it's negative four point five, and then here's where it's negative four, et cetera, et cetera. It's getting closer and closer to negative three. Like here's negative three and a half. It's never going to actually approach negative 3, but what is Y doing as X gets closer and closer to there? Where's it going? Negative infinity. That's right. So as the X values are getting closer to negative 3, the corresponding Y values are decreasing. So that's going to negative 3 from the left. So if we're going to negative 3 from the right, so now I'm on the right of negative 3. I'm going to get closer and closer and closer to negative 3. Um, X equals negative, what is this, 1. Here's the Y value that corresponds. Here's the Y value that corresponds to negative 2. Negative 2.5. Negative 2 point whatever. Negative 2.89. I don't know. Where is it going to go? Where is it going forever? The Y value. Up, right? Positive infinity. Okay. So as the graph goes out, Y approaches 2. As the graph goes in, it approaches negative and positive infinity. You're going to try this all on your own on the next problem on the back. Um, I'm not going to put that problem up here yet because I'm going to leave the highlighted stuff up here so you can see it because otherwise you'll be flipping back and forth. So take a minute, you're doing the example problem on the back by yourself for just a moment. If you don't die first, because you all look almost near dead. Um, one thing I want to drive home is that when it says Y approaches what, it's the same thing as thinking about, well, what is the graph doing? And by the graph, I don't mean like the X and the Y coordinates and all those dashed lines. When I say graph, I mean this 
and this. This is the graph. We want to know what it's doing as it goes out and as it comes in. The out part is the end behavior, the positive and the negative infinity. So as x goes out this way, right, so here's x and it's corresponding y. Here's the next x, I'm going out this way, but here's the y that goes with it. Here's where x equals 4, here's the y that goes with it. Here's the next x, here's the y. What's that pattern? What are the y values approaching as I go out to positive infinity? 1. They're approaching this number where y equals 1. It will never actually reach it. It's just getting closer and closer to it, in theory, forever and ever and ever. Okay. And then as x goes out to negative infinity. So like here's where x is negative 2 and here's its y value x equals negative 3, its y value, so forth and so on. What is y approaching? As x goes this way, y gets closer and closer to same thing, 1. So that's out at the end. Now we want to know what the graph is doing as it's coming in. And it's coming in to this line right here because there's two different parts. All right, so that's mustard and ketchup, and I'm going to do relish for it with green. You ready? So what does this negative exponent thingy, that's weird, what does that mean? From the left. So I'm coming into 2 from the left. So here's x equals 2. Here's me on the left of 2, right? So I'm getting close. I'm going in this way. Um, it confuses some people because it feels like I'm really moving to the right, but I just told you left. I'm coming from the left. Okay. So as x is going this way, so here's negative 3, here's the y. Here's where x is negative 2, there's the y, negative 1. Um, here's where x is 0, x is 1. So x's are getting closer and closer to where x equals 2. Where are the y's going? Where are they going? Where's that? Is that hell? No, right? I mean, maybe for some of us that are stuck and don't want to be in class. But that is called, down forever is called, negative infinity. Thank you. And then we want to know, what is y doing when we come to 2 from the right? What is the graph doing there? <coughs> also, not hell, negative infinity. Um, read the directions to this problem. The, everything changes here. We're doing a completely new thing, and I want you to read it and get your mind wrapped around it for a second. So read the instructions to that next example. Okay, are we looking for end behavior? Are we coming into a number? Is that what's asking me to do? What what is this asking me to find? Like what kind of answer are we looking for? What form? I just want one person to say that word, please. Thank you. All right, so we're looking for the equation for this graph. Um, by the way, is this the parent graph of 1 over x or 1 over x squared? x squared, right? And it's been shifted. It's gone left and down. So here, here's the new shifted axes right here. And we want to write the equation for it. So what I'm about to give you, and I want you to write these down, are, excuse me, the general forms for the shifted equation. So this is an HK form. If your problem is a 1 over x problem, the general form that you're going to use for that is this. 1 over x minus h plus k. So it's still 
the horizontal shift is still insiders lie with the X and the vertical shift is still just out on the right hand side not attached to anything okay just like the stuff we did last semester um, if your problem is a 1 over x squared it's this exact same thing only your x minus h is parentheses squared okay, still insiders lie for the horizontal shift and the vertical shift is out on the right all by itself because it's an introvert and it needs to be alone to recharge so what we have to do here is use the correct general form plug in the specific information from the problem and then go about our merry way we already said that we're going to use the 1 over x squared form so that's this one the next thing we have to do is figure out well where is my h and k going to come from and I was going to ask you to see what you might come up with, but um, I don't think you want me to do that. So I'm just going to tell you. I think that's what you want me to do. That's the vibe that I'm getting from you all today. The HK comes from the shifted origin. So that's where you're going to get the HK from. So here's the shifted origin here. The coordinates are negative 2, negative 2. And if you're ever going to be a math teacher, this is terrible form, having the two things the exact same number. Because then when I plug it in, you might not be sure which thing I plugged in where. They really should be different. So just, you know, pro tip if any of you are going to be math teachers in trouble. So this is your H and this is your K. We just got to plug it in. Plug it in, plug it in, right there. So x minus h, h is negative 2. What's a minus a negative make? Plus, very good. So it becomes a plus 2 parentheses squared plus k. k is negative, so it's minus 2. And that was very easy. I want to show you something, though. And I want you to put your pencils down, and I just want your eyes up here so that you see it. <clears throat> and you don't have to write it down because it's not actually part of the problem, okay? If this graph, if the black parts weren't facing up like that, but instead they were doing this, but everything else was the same, your equation would be that exact same equation, because you would use negative 2, negative 2 for your HK, but you would have to remember that because it's flipped over, the A value would have had to have been negative. So you, all you have to do is tack a negative on at the end of your problem, okay? So be aware of that and kind of be on the lookout when you're doing those problems. Um, okay, you can pick your pencils back up. And then do these four parts right here. I'm going to talk about those last two with you, but these four you can do by yourself. So take a moment and do that, please. All right, real quickly. So I'm going to go through this faster. That might be better for some of you. I know sometimes, like, when I go through all the detail, you kind of get bogged down. So here's how I would explain this if I was just trying to go fast through it. Um, as x goes out to negative infinity, so... As the graph is going out this way, what is y approaching? It's getting closer and closer to 1. As x goes out to positive infinity means what is the graph doing as it goes out to the right? What is y doing? The y values are getting closer and closer to 1 again. And then, so that's going out. Now we, went, we want to know what the black parts are doing as it's going in. So negative 2 from the left so here's where x equals negative 2 as the graph gets closer as x gets closer and closer y is going out to positive infinity and then when we come from negative 2 from the right so here's the part that's coming in i'm coming in from the right as x gets closer y is going down forever 
Oh, and those last two, nah, blah. Um, the line x equals negative 2, which is this, is a vertical asymptote, which it is, because it's running vertical. It's an asymptote because the graph will never reach it. Because as x approaches negative 2, y approaches positive negative infinity. So that's what goes there. And then the line y equals 1, hold tight, I'm almost done is a horizontal asymptote because as x goes to positive and negative infinity, the end behavior, y approaches the exact same value, which is 1. Now, you know how you do that thing when I give you your homework and you, you, put, you pack it away and you get your phone out? Oh, fabulous answer. I want you to not do that immediately today. I want you to take 30 seconds and look and flip it to the back. Look at this top section. This is the section where you have to write the equation, where you have to do the HK stuff. I want you to just use your brain for a minute and try and figure out which ones are reflected and therefore would need a negative value. I'm not even asking you to do them right now. I just want you to think about that because I hope that later when you have a quiz or test, just going through that process for a moment will help. Um, you know, trigger your memory later to think about that as well. But anyway, you may have your, your phones out.